Luxury minivans are a rare breed, even more so when they feature only two seats in the passenger compartment, which is behind a bulkhead. And to make things even more unique, let's add a hybrid drivetrain and a striking design. This is the Lexus LM350H, and I'm taking you for a first-class review experience. The Lexus LM is a luxury minivan that shares components with the Toyota Alphard, a model available mainly in Asia. This is the second generation of the LM, which now rides on Toyota's global platform, which it also shares with the Sienna minivan that large families so lack in Europe. Measuring more than 512 centimeters in length, the LM has dimensions comparable to the extended body new Volkswagen Multivan and Mercedes-Benz V-Class. But while the VW can be powered by a petrol, diesel or a petrol-based plug-in hybrid powertrain and the Mercedes comes only with a diesel, the Lexus is only available as a hybrid. The self-charging one, as Toyota likes to call it, to the chagrin of many a car journalist. This here is a less powerful version called the 350H with a 2.5 litre petrol engine which puts out a total of 250 horsepower with the help of an electric motor. This is the same powertrain as in the NX and RX 350H models. A 500H version with a 2.4-litre turbo engine known from the RX 500H is also available in some markets. Since we're talking about a minivan where the passenger compartment is the star of the show, let's skip the design talk because apart from the um, interesting radiator grille, all we get is a big box on wheels. It's the inside that really counts. Oh. I don't recall traveling in a car with a separate passenger compartment. Sure, I've seen movies where people would be driven in stretched limousines, which had some sort of a sliding piece of glass, but these movies were, I don't know, 20, 30 years ago, so there were usually also some curtains or maybe a piece of wood or plywood that would come out from the lower part of the bulkhead to cover the window, right? Lexus uses active electrified privacy glass. It contains a layer of liquid crystal molecules which, when randomly oriented, make the glass opaque. However, when electricity flows through them, they line up and make the glass clear-ish. Later, we'll talk about what it means for the driver, but now let's focus on TV screens, massages and fridges. The LM can be ordered as a 7-seater or a 4-seater. The 7-seater looks more like a 6.5-seater the seventh seat is in the middle of the third row when the two side passengers fold their armrests. But even in the seventh seater, it is clear priority is on second row comfort. There is just no bulkhead and therefore no 48 inch screen, just a measly 14 inch display. In the BMW 7 Series, designers decided to go with wireless connectivity and streaming. And in the Lexus LM, a decision was made to leave the media source to the user. So, there are two HDMI ports in the back here. 
and you can either watch a movie on the entire screen or split the screen into two separate areas and play two different types of content. I suppose it's great for kids who cannot decide what they want to watch as long as it's not what the other one wants. I don't know if and how often I would use this TV here, but the biggest TV possible in a car is apparently a statement of luxury. I guess you'll just need to get one of those streaming boxes and plug them in. Now, I'd stream and watch on my laptop, but what do I know? Most functions in the rear can be controlled by one of two remote controls which resemble smartphones. I like that I can remove them from their cradles and hold them rather than try and aim at a tiny fixed screen on the doors like in the BMW 7 series. BMW used to have a removable tablet, but it was clearly an app running on a mid-range Android device. Here the software seems to be designed specifically for this car. So, we can control the AC, multimedia and the seats. There are also physical seat controls on the seats. The seats have massage, heating and ventilation. There are also footrests and this is where you can really make use of them. In the Kia EV9, the footrests were at most for children because there was not enough room for adults. You can unfold the seat for sleeping, but the headrest is so big and so far that when I'm lying down, I can't reach it with my head. I'm 175 centimeters tall, perhaps someone taller would be more comfortable lying down, but then they may be touching the bulkhead with their feet. In addition to HDMI ports, there are USB ports and a 230 volt outlet in the compartment under the armrest. The driver has to activate the DC converter. There are also additional storage compartments with USB ports and wireless chargers on the sides. My impression is that they are more for passengers traveling in the third row of the seven-seater version. There are toggle switches on the ceiling to control the doors and the blinds. In addition to blinds on the side windows, there are also blinds on roof windows. Under the screen are two storage compartments, perhaps for shoes or slippers to make passengers more comfortable on a long trip. There is also a refrigerator in the middle, which holds four bottles of wine. We drove the LM to a winery and chilled the wine on the way to our friend's place. Hidden in window side armrests are folding tables. They are good enough to put a laptop on them and get some work done. They are stable enough on dual carriageways. Unfortunately, things get a lot more bumpy on rougher roads. And like in many cars, the shakes are less felt in the front than in the rear. The rear is also less quiet than the driver's cabin. Maybe it's a matter of more space and acoustics, but if quiet isn't your thing, you can treat yourself to a concert from a 23-speaker Mark Levinson audio system. Let me go back for a moment to the bulkhead and the active glass. Now, the passenger in the rear can close the glass, make it opaque and lock it which ensures some degree of privacy. Now, it's unlikely someone from the front will hear much of the conversation in the rear unless you shout. And speaking of raising one's voice, I noticed this minivan doesn't seem to have an intercom to talk to the driver. So even at low speeds, when the window is down, the rear passenger and the driver have to raise their voices to speak to each other. Not a particularly luxury experience, I would say. Okay, I guess I now have to go and drive this thing. Top tip! When looking for a driver and a bodyguard who will travel in the front, make sure there are no taller than 180 centimeters. Taller driver complain that the steering wheel obscures their view of the instrument cluster because the adjustment range is insufficient. Also, the backrest touches the bulkhead fairly soon, so there isn't much room for adjustment there either. But for me, I'm 175 centimeters tall. It's very comfortable up in the front. In addition, the cabin, in my opinion, is better soundproof than the passenger compartment. I find the LM very pleasant to drive, both in the city and on open roads. Lexus promises combined fuel economy of 7.4 liters per 100 kilometers. In and around the city, I managed to get less than 6 liters. 
on the motorway at 140 km per hour I was averaging around 9 but at 120 km per hour I was below 8 liters. The 0 to 100 km per hour time if you care should be 8.7 seconds. I got 8.8 .8 seconds. However the LM feels much more dynamic especially when you need to change lanes or overtake. Something Lexus should pay attention to, especially in a car of this type, is the ability to easily turn off all the beepers. I know, safety first, but I suspect VIPs want to be driven to their destination quickly and comfortably, and constant warnings of the driver assistance systems disrupt the VIP's comfort. On the plus side, in the Lexus it is possible to turn off ESA without losing traffic sign recognition. The downside is that the rest of the infotainment system is typical Japanese torture. Every time I start the car I have to confirm my privacy choices. And I can't do it once and for all in the Lexus Link Plus app, which doesn't seem to do much except for showing you the car's location and contacting you with the dealer for service. Android Auto in this test car is still wired and Bluetooth seems to work only when Android Auto is disconnected. AC can't make up its mind, either it doesn't cool enough or cools too much, so I had to switch between normal and eco mode for AC. Something that could have been achieved with a single press of a button requires several clicks on the screen. but at least the adaptive cruise control works much better than in Toyotas. I took this car for a 1000 km road trip and it would have been perfect if not for strong crosswind. Now I realize that larger SUVs and minivans are susceptible to crosswind, nothing strange there, but in some cars there is a special ESP program that helps to fight such gusts, apparently not in the Lexus LM because there were sections of the road where I had to struggle to keep the car in lane. I should add that the Lexus LM has all-wheel drive and it has surprisingly good traction in the corners for a 2350 kilogram minivan anyway. In the cockpit you get cup holders, obviously, there is a large storage compartment under the armrest with another HDMI port inside, the glove box is small and the door pockets are rather tight as well. There is also not enough room to hang a jacket behind the seat and Lexus should have either used real veneer or skipped this plastic faux wood. The driver can control the bulkhead window, the blinds and the air conditioning in the rear as well as open and close the rear doors. The driver can also return the rear seats to their original upright position. Visibility is not bad considering the type of vehicle. Even if the rear passengers make the glass opaque, the driver can use the virtual mirror. But if you're not carrying privacy sensitive passengers, I recommend opening the glass and the shades on the passenger side rear windows. Although there is a button over the license plate which releases the tailgate, the buttons to actually open and close electrically are on either side of the vehicle and it's a good idea because the tailgate is about 130 centimeters long and you'd have to move out of the way anyway. Lexus says the four-seater has 752 liter boot capacity. According to my measurements, by the floor the boot is about 80 centimeters deep, about 130 centimeters wide and about 90 centimeters up to the window line. But the higher we go, the shallower it gets due to reclined seats. Under the floor is a mini spare. Concealed in the left side are fuses and a 12 volt battery. Speaking of the battery, a word of caution, in order to start the car you have to be really determined and hold the start button and the brake quite long, otherwise you're in accessory mode which drains the battery in 10 to 15 minutes. I was showing the car to my friends and we soon had to charge the 12 volt battery because the car would not start. 
at least we had chilled wine and we weren't planning to drive anywhere that evening. Prices of the Lexus LM started 122,700 euro for the seven-seater. The four-seater costs 147,100 euro. I don't know how to sum up the Lexus LM because this vehicle is like no other I have reviewed. This is by far the most luxurious minivan in which I have traveled and it's also the least like a commercial vehicle on which many minivans are based. But most importantly, the LM reminded me that we need more minivans in Europe. And how do you like the Lexus LM? Would you choose the four-seater or the seven-seater? Let me know in the comment section below. If you like my sarcastic, down-to-earth and possibly mildly amusing car reviews, join me every Friday at 3 p.m. Central European time and don't forget to subscribe and like this video as it helps me with the YouTube algorithm. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.